Welcome to July Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. And what a day it has been for cryptocurrency. First up, Rao Powell now says that 98% of his net worth is in crypto. This is pretty amazing because just in October, it was only 50%. So I think he is making a massive bet also. And this could be why, because PayPal is actively advertising cryptocurrencies on Twitter and other formats. Also, legendary investor Paul Tudor Jones hints that because of fractals, this could be a possible explosive Bitcoin rally. And it's a nice way to look at a chart, but in all reality, we know where Bitcoin's going. And finally, as a follow-up, I'm going to transfer some XRP from my ledger to my Celsius wallet, just to show everybody how it's done and they can be ready for the spark airdrop. And we'll get into all that, but first, take a look what's going on in the markets. So today, it is uh, November 30th, it is almost 3 p.m. Texas time, let's see what we got. Well, Bitcoin touched a high of around 198 something. I can't remember exactly what it was. Actually, CNN did a report on it, which talks about Bitcoin reaching its all-time high. So you can just know that when CNN is going to report on something, eh, it's not a good sign. Usually we see a little bit of a tumble, but again, this may be a different bull run. Ethereum is above 600, that's fantastic. XRP making those huge gains, 46 for the week. Tether's Tether, 19 billion, like see an audit on that. Bitcoin Cash is at 312, well, that's pretty good, 10% up. Chainlink's up, everything's up. I mean, let's just, let's just call it what it is. Wow, great, everything is up. And this is fantastic to look at, but what's really important is to take a look at how this compares to Bitcoin. Not to take a look at how Bitcoin is for the dollar or how Ethereum is for the dollar, but really we're going to take a look at how these altcoins are doing against Bitcoin. Well, if you had invested in Ethereum, well, you're 2% up uh, in 24 hours. That's pretty good. 1.2 for XRP. Tether, eh, that's just a dollar, right? 4% you'll be up for Bitcoin Cash. And actually, the top six or so, you're doing pretty good. Past that, you're not doing so hot because you really just should have invested into Bitcoin. Unless you invest into Aave, so good for you. And a little bit of uh, for urine finance and everything else. So that's really what's going on with the market. Let's just jump into today's stories. So first off, I'm not going to harp on this too much. We all know Raul Powell is a huge Bitcoin you know, fan. That only makes sense. There's a couple of things that he said in here that was pretty interesting. I mean, one of which was you know how much he actually invested uh, into Bitcoin. And I'll just sum this up into a couple sentences. October 7th, he was on Stansbury Research. It was a nice little interview. Uh, it was him and um, Daniela Cambone. And we've already covered that. And he said, hey, I've got 50% uh, in Bitcoin. I thought that was a lot. I was like, wow, it's, uh, it's pretty ballsy. But uh, then, that was at the beginning of October. And then the middle of October, he saw this tweet storm saying that, you know, Bitcoin is a massive black hole and it's going to suck everything into it. It's kind of like the same along the lines that Alex Mashinsky was talking about as far as like what cryptocurrency is going to do for the internet. It's going to swallow the internet whole. And you can just see it right now. I mean, all the different money that's coming in from, from retail and, and investors and hedge fund managers and all these different people just coming in. Before you know it, you're like, where's all the money? Oh, it's all in Bitcoin. So that's just how I see things. And that's why I when I see these dips, I'm like, who cares? Who cares about these dips? The only reason I care that Bitcoin price goes down, that just means that I can buy more at a more of a percentage. So last week when it actually went down, I talked about this last week, once it goes down to like what I feel is like a baseline around 18.5, almost 19,000, I said, wow, it's already at like 17 or 16.5. I woke up at like 4.30 in the morning like I usually do. And I'm like, I got to buy more of this. So usually every day I buy a certain amount of all my different cryptocurrencies. And in this situation, I'm like, wow, I mean, Bitcoin went down that much. I got to dump 20% more of what I would usually spend. So if I, you know, put in a hundred bucks, I would put in $120 and so on and so forth. So there are just some days when I just feel like, hey, I'm not going to FOMO all the way in, but I am going to increase my uh, my positions as far as my dollar cost averaging. And that's one of those days. And this is the exact same thing that I see moving on into the future. And Raul is just like me. I mean, he's I, he's a little bit different, right? He makes a lot more money. Let's just be honest. Uh, but he says right here, he goes again, and he's talking about Bitcoin and gold. This is the best trader investment and future opportunity I have ever found. And it has the power to give the little guy a chance to grab their share of the wealth creation before Wall Street does. Grab it. You need to grab it. That's really what it comes down to. 
all these different FUD articles and talking about how Bitcoin is going to be regulated. And before you know, it's going to disappear and it's just going to be, it's going to go to zero and the tulip mania and all that BS is just a way for them to steal Bitcoin from you. Don't you get it? All they want to do is scare the living hell out of you. So you will, sh you will sell your Bitcoin, all your cryptocurrency, so they can get their dirty, grubby hands on it and they can sit on it and drive the price up. And before you know, it, you're like, oh, I got priced out. I used to have it, now I don't. And it's one of those things that upsets me because I just feel like if people would just not get too emotional in the whole thing, I mean, now here I am talking, I'm getting emotional because I'm getting ticked off. But as far as like investing, there's no reason just to go, ah, you know, I, I, I don't know. And I think it's gonna just put a little bit in. Don't gamble so much just invest and sit on it and just don't even think about uh, the money that you have and it's amazing like in 2017 when i was going through this i'm like why, why do people tell me that it just seems so ridiculous i have to check the price all the time i've got to do all these things but it's not the case you just invest into it long-term investor i don't know when bitcoin's gonna go to 100,000 or 300,000 or whatever else but i know it's gonna get there I just don't know when it's going to get there. So I will just invest a little bit slowly but surely, and it will eventually get there. But again, if you're thinking that, uh, you know what, it's just going to go to zero or whatever else, I just I just don't see it. I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comment section. There's always a couple of people who uh, tell me how wrong I am. <laughs> so anyhow, moving on. Oh, let me go forward. These two quotes or these two tweets really just tell the whole thing. He says, I'm going to explain this again. And he's, he's talking about regulation when people are talking about like this this goofball, J, uh, Jamie Dimon from JP Morgan talking about how Bitcoin's going to be regulated. He goes, look, I'm going to explain it again. You might hate, re hate regulation of Bitcoin. You might have a massive philosophical aversion to it, and that's fine. But they're going to regulate the fiat on ramps and off ramps, and it will make you rich as institutions now will be able to adopt it, trade-offs. So what he's talking about this is, this is the same reason why Brian Armstrong got so up in arms when there was this big article about Steve Mnuchin, who was going to start to regulate uh, these on and off ramps, and also for where the cryptocurrency was going into which wallets out from these exchanges, these off ramps and on ramps, such as um, Coinbase. So he was upset. He's like, oh man, that's that's more regulation for me than people who may not use it. And then look, I already talked about how I think they're sucking wind anyhow. I think they're crumbling from the inside because there's so much competition out there. You can watch the video uh, it was for yesterday. But yeah, I mean, that sucks for an exchange owner, but don't feel bad for them and their billions. I think they'll be okay and they'll figure out a way to, uh, to uh, still rip us off in fees. <laughs> but really what it comes down to is this. Yes, that's a pummer and it's going to be a problem and we're not going to like it. But Raul was right. Uh, all these different institutions where they need, you know, permission from their upper, upper, upper boss to actually do anything. Well, now they have regulation. Now they have these things in place. Now they can get in the game. And when they can get in the game, they're bringing massive amounts of money to this inst this situation. And they're able to put it into Bitcoin, which will raise the price. The problem with these institutions getting in is they're going to do the, their same dirty tricks that they've all done in the market and manipulate. You thought whales were bad in 2017? I think these institutions are even worse. And that's why when I see these dips, I'm like, there is only one reason for that. And it is those huge whales out there, whether they be institutions or not. I just don't see good things. And that's why I don't like to actually even look at the charts anymore. And I may even do away with CoinGecko in the very beginning because it just makes people like, oh, I don't know, look, I don't know when it's going to get there, but it's going to get there. And last piece, he says, okay, last bomb. I got a sell order in tomorrow to sell all my gold and scale to buy Bitcoin and ETH. And he said it's an 80-20 split. I don't, I don't own anything else except some bond calls and some, some dollars. 98% of my liquid net worth. So uh, you can't categorize me except irresponsibly long. Good night. And then Dan Held says, why is it 80-20? And he says, I don't know. He goes, I think it's a hunch. I think... Ethereum outperformance uh, Bitcoin by five to one. Not, and that one, I don't think it's a hunch. I think it's an inevitability because with Ethereum, everything's built on Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum 2.0, I was kind of on shaky ground with their launch, but uh, they blew it out the water. And it's going to come on December 1st and they've got billionaires investing into those funds and pumping Ethereum into the staking pools. So 
I don't see a problem with that. I think it's going to be huge. I think it's a $10,000 coin. And right now it's only at 600 bucks. So when he says he thinks it's going to uh, massively outperform Bitcoin, yeah, it will. So that's why I got a lot of Bitcoin and I got a lot of Ethereum. Not figuratively speaking, of course. I don't have hundreds or thousands or something crazy like that, but I got enough and I feel pretty good. And I really think that things going to do well. And if it doesn't, well, I got a lot of Cardano. <laughs> so that's it for that story. Let me know what you think. Let's move on to the next. <laughs>